Hi Flosstube and Instagram friends, my name is Kim and this is Flosstube number 39 on May 14, 2022. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram, I'm kgoldman63 on Instagram. So welcome, or welcome back. I have a lot of stitching to share with you again today. I have the three finishes that you see here. Um, so there'll be some more framing discussion because I did make the frames for those as well. There are a couple of whips that got some progress and our new start for our Mighty Acorn. I have a lot of good stitchy chit chat. There's a lot of stuff rolling around in my head. So let's go ahead and get started. As always, I wanna do a couple of Instagram shares for some beautiful stitching. This is B, who um, stitched Long and Winding Road by Blackbird Designs and finished this in a piece that she got, I believe, from Hobby Lobby, right, B? Um, I have this chart and I think this is, I, I might have to take a trip to Hobby Lobby because I think this is a fabulous finish. And then I have uh, my friend Andrea, who showed this a few days ago, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's fabulous. But then this morning, Andrea posted this. If you go to her Instagram, you can flip through and see more closely several of these. Um, she had mentioned something about, gosh, I hope the needle roll is going to come back in style. And I said, like, is that a thing? I, these are terrific. I don't have one, but I'm pretty sure that needs to happen. Stat. And then I have my uh, Hands Across the Sea, uh, the pair, the Rose and the Giant pair. And we have several wonderful finishes here. Kirsten stitched her. And then Sarah, look at this frame that Sarah used. Isn't that, oh my gosh. And of course we were able to enjoy uh, Brenda, Brenda and Laura. She showed hers on Instagram first and then this last Sunday they did um, the reveal, her total framing. Oh, Brenda. Um, and then of course one more, Annette. So thank you everyone for letting me share. I'm gonna set this down here for a moment. Um, all right, so let me start with my first finish, and this is what we'll do first. So we'll do the Rose and the Giant Pear by Hands Across the Sea Samplers. Now I stitched, um, let's see, 40 count vintage exemplar. It might be vintage meadow rue, I'm not sure. Um, but any kind of just a warm, this is just a warm red tone fabric, I think will work lovely. Um, I used the DMC conversion that was provided and uh, let's see, I did, I did cut down this frame to size, but I had a caution. Let me really quickly tell you my story. <laughs> it ended up being having a happy ending, but it could have been a tale of woe. <laughs> I miss, I, I like to measure my pieces, my final finished pieces. I, you know, I have the video that I put out where I talk you through how I cut down frames and I measure my pieces. And then I like to add three quarters of an inch to the finish because I like a quarter of an inch reveal on all sides. But if I only add the half inch, it doesn't give me any room for error. So I measured it, I wrote down my measurements, I thought I'd added the three quarters of an inch, I, I, set, I set it aside for a moment, I had to go do something else and came back and thought, oh, what were those again? And, I, and you better check your paper. It was in the garage, I was in the house, so I did not double check. And I cut it and I said, oh my gosh, that looks, that looks off. So I had forgotten to add the appropriate amount to the length. And what I ended up doing was I, was, I was, I was a little heartbroken. I was like, I really wanted to use this frame. So I just cut down the sides a little bit more, you know, inched it a little bit and just teeny bit by teeny bit. I thought this is, we'll see, let's see. And I put the piece in there and it ended up fitting, I think really well. It's just a smidge, but I think it looks, it looks really good. I'm really happy with it. So, oh, and I was gonna say, I was very thankful. Uh, Nicola from Hands Across the Sea, uh, when you look at the chart of this, there is one section of the border that is like one stitch more. And she has put a notation right on the chart that says something about, you know, watch this spot, like caution, there's something a little bit different in the border here. And that was really, really appreciated. Um, she also has mentioned in a prior video that it is very a very good idea when you first get your chart to really take the time to look at it, you know, count the border, make sure that it's, there aren't any discrepancies, um, you know, maybe mark the places where you have to, oh, watch out here. Um, I, I, that is a really, really good idea. And I don't, I, I don't often do that. I mean, I count as I go along and do the border, but this, that was very helpful. And I think that taking the time ahead of time to, um, really let yourself know that there's a potential area that's different from the, you know, it's, they're not always uniform <laughs> as we know. 
but this is my rose. I put the backing on and uh, have a beautiful finish. Did I show you? I have a beautiful finish to this. I'm very happy with. Okay, that border, I'm not gonna lie, that border was a little bit of work. It, it was, uh, I didn't make any mistakes, so I was thankful about that, but it did take a bit of time. Let me set that there straight. Okay, so then my next finish here is my JBW Designs and Elegant Alphabet. You know, I, Judy, I just really just fell in love with this design immediately. I'm sure that it has a lot to do with their, you know, the birds and the pink. Uh, I did stitch with the Gloriana, coral red and on 40 count fox and rabbit ballet slippers uh, this is the leftover piece I guess maybe it worked out all right that the other one was cut a little bit short because I had just the right amount left over to be able to frame this one as well I'm, I left this out for a reason I'm going to show you that in a minute but let me get in nice and close for you to see finish it Okay, so um, wood has acid, and I um, definitely wanted to protect this piece by using a product. I'm going to show you the box in just a moment. And this is just a peel, like a tape you just peel off the back. I will start in the corner, line it up in the corner, and, and just kind of draw it across, you know, making sure and pressing it into the, the edge here, and then laying the, the flap down at the very end. And it, it goes in quite nicely that way. So let me show you the box for that. This will then get the brown paper on the back and a, and a fastener. Let's see if I can reach back here. All right. And I also got a, a nice uh, finish on my MA Badger. I was able to put a little bit of a darker brown stain on that than the red. Um, I, I just like the brown a little bit better. So here's the box for this tape that I used to protect from the acid in the wood. It just looks like a roll of duct tape. Cuts very easily. It's not gummy. It's not super, super sticky, so you can um, adjust it if you if you need to. It works out really well. Uh, okay, so before we move on to my next finish, I have a couple of things I did want to share with you. If you'll remember, last time I showed you my Anna Grater, and I said I wanted to do a bit of an experiment about using the E6000 to glue the corners. So here's the E6000, what it looks like. It comes in several different sizes. You can get even tiny, tiny ones. Uh, E6000 does take 24 hours to cure. It's very uh, uh, loose. It's not like a hot glue where it dries immediately. So you have to set it nice and flat, put it in your clamp like you would if you were wood gluing something and leave it alone. And um, I did the experiment with the, this is what that frame looked like before I added the decor wax. This is that, I don't know, is this a resin or something? And if you'll notice, you know, the frames definitely, there's a, that's how they come in the sides that I didn't cut down, but um they pull apart and here's the part that I glued and you know, I'm putting a bit of pressure on there. It's, and that's not going to happen on your wall. So I feel pretty secure with my E6000. Um, I did have a couple of other products. Let me share with you really quickly. I'm always talking about the decor wax or the acrylic paint. And so I have a few things here. You can use any brand. I'm not brand specific. These are just the ones I happen to have. This uh, home decor wax, it's very uh, liquidy. So if you want more of a paste, um, keep that in mind. And then here is just a uh, chalk paint. Now chalk paint can get, um, this has been around for a little while and so I can't really shake it and get it out of the bottle anymore. But chalk paint is water-based. So if you just pull a little bit out with the end of a plastic spoon or something and put it in a different container, add a little water and mix it up, you can still use it just fine. Don't add your water to the container because it could then, if you're not gonna use the whole container at one time, it could continue to be contaminated and you know, smell bad and whatever. And then just a regular, um, any type of acrylic craft paint. Um, there's a lot of them out there. Uh, so anyway, just a few products that I use. And then I also do the, I don't have the, the box for it, but it's the double-sided uh, yarn tree acid-free tape. And again, it just peels off and then you, um, you peel the extra backing off. And this is what I'll use a lot of the times. You can use this to frame your piece if you wanna put it on the back of your foam core and then stretch your linen over it. I don't do that very often. Um, and, but I do use it to maybe hold down the edges of the fabric. Um, I do have... Let me show you one other prior finish before we get to my next one here. I want to show you, so this is a pla another plastic frame. I decided not to cut this down. I really like this frame. It had a, a different art piece in it, and I just took the backing off and took it out and decided to see if I had anything that would work. And Isabella Johnstone, was I've stitched her in 2021, 
And she, this is like her third frame, but I think this is the one. I, it's a little bit tight at the top and bottom, but um, she looks beautiful in here. And my point is that I, this is plastic, so I can't use any kind of a, uh, you know, a glazing point, which is the little metal uh, arrow type things that you can push into wood to hold your pieces. But this is, it's not gonna fall out. I just put the double-sided uh, thin layer of tape around the edges and put the paper on top of it and it's it's not going anywhere. So um, like I said, you can use a glazing point or something if it's wood, but with plastic, it's a little more challenging and I don't worry about it. So that's gonna work out well. Okay, so I think that's all. Oh, and one more thing. Let me show you the example here. I told you there was a lot rolling around in my head. I'm gonna show you, this is a prior finish. This is my Clara Hansen, but I have obviously made some alterations to reflect attic needlework where Sam Rose Rule, Jean Lee, and I was able to do the 56 in a slightly different color because of course Jean Lee, Jean Lee loves her 56 gown. Uh, I wanted to show you this. I wanna talk a little bit more, more about the framing, but um, I just, I just wanted to share my wonderful news that I got into summer school. This will be my first time. Um, that was a little bit stressful. We had, I had to set, I set my timer on my phone the night before to remind me to set the timer on my phone the morning of. My husband set the timer on his phone, had his work computer on, ready to go. I wrote the email that said, you know, I would love to attend summer school. And at 7.59, he put like the second countdown on the phone. So we counted down to eight o'clock where he, you know, he hit the mouse and off it went. It was like, phew, okay, now we just wait and see. So by the end of the day, I got the wonderful news that I get to go to summer school. I'm very excited. I'll get to see all my friends again. I'll get to see Jean and Amy and Carolyn and Carol. And of course, there will be a lot of floss tubers that, you know, I have been watching for years now and the amazing designers that I've been stitching their things for quite a while. So I'm, thanks for letting me share my exciting news. But I want to show a couple of things I do a little bit differently from that video where I talk about how I cut down uh, thrifted frames. And one of them is uh, at that time, I was really buying frames that I would try to break apart the corners and, you know, take out the metal part. So I didn't cut through that by accident or whatever. And a lot of that was very difficult because you'd lose a lot of your, your length, your measurement, being able to cut it down. Right. So now I like to buy rather large frames, and then I can measure from two corners. So I'll measure from one corner over, you know, and, and cut, and then measure from this corner over and make the cut. And then I go to the opposite corner, and I do the same thing. So that when I'm pushing them together to glue them together, I'm only having to glue, glue two corners instead of all four. Um, that works out really well. And I'm also able to sometimes get more than one finished piece out of, two finished pieces maybe out of one frame. Um, depending if I'm really good with my measurements and I don't make a mistake. But that has worked out really well. And I did have someone mention that when I did my video the first time and she said that that was a good idea. And I thought, oh, all right, let me graduate to that, right? Um, so that works out better than trying to find a frame that might not be, you know, too much larger. And then you have to worry about trying to break the corners apart. Um, let's see what else. I think, I think that's really the biggest thing that I'm doing differently. So let's go ahead and move on to my next finish, which is right here, Midsummer Song by Misty Purcell, Luminous Fiber Arts. And I stitched this on 36 count Beach Brew by r, &R with all of Misty's Call for uh, Flosses, except I changed the middle basket to the pinks. Um, she did use a combination of over-dyed cottons as, as well as some D DMC. But um, I didn't stitch the border, and so I missed out on one of the little uh, ladybugs that's in the border on this side. I did add one little ladybug here, and because I think Misty put the year on this corner of um, the face, and I ended up putting it here in the middle. And I think that's it. I did everything else with what she did. This bee is pretty terrific. It did take, one of the wings took me four tries. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it was a little bit tricky for me. And then the other wing, lickety split, no problem. This came out beautifully and I'm excited to hang it above my buffet in my other room where I put all of my summer things on display. Now I haven't affixed this yet with the paper. Um, I am not sure about the color of this frame. It's very red, started out very red. This frame was in really bad shape. There was a, I had to glue all four corners. I only cut down two of them, but I had to glue all four and there was a lot of wood filler and sanding and um, I've been playing with trying to get the color just right. I think this is a little bit of a flat brown so far and I may have to sand it a bit and try something else, but 
other than that, she'll be ready to go. So I can put the glazing points on this. I do have to fill, it's, I, I'm not crazy about this profile. I wouldn't buy this on purpose, but um, I might have to fit, pad it a little bit so that I can put the paper along the back and kind of fill in a little bit of this well. But, all right, so she came out beautifully. Um, I'm going to have to add one of the upcoming things that I'm gonna share with you. I'm gonna have to add something now for my Misty Monday SAL uh, days. And so I have that to share with you in a bit. Okay, a couple of other, let's see, one more prior finish that I have here is my wordplay. I stitched this uh, quite a few years ago. Um, um, Abbasidarian by r and I think. And I plan on stitching June. Um, that one's a whip and I only stitched the other one. I stitched February and I also have April, but I haven't started that one yet. So this is my, this will be the June and it's been a couple of years since I started it. So I really, really hope that this can get finished this year. Let me move this thread out of the way. All the threads have been, you know, put away. I'm going to have to go take them all out again because I think I just needed them. So, you know, and here's my back. Like I said, I started this a couple of years ago. Just as an aside, um, I'm not an expert in stitcher. I'm self-taught. I've learned everything that I do nowadays from watching FlossTube and, you know, looking at the wonderful tutorials that people will take the time to put up for us. So um, it's, I, I'm kind of always even changing sometimes how I start my threads or end my threads and just whatever I, I'm finding works best for me that's the most comfortable. So um, let's see, let's go ahead. I did have really quickly before I go into my whips, someone had asked me for my conversion that I am using on Polly, which is by uh, Traveling Stitcher. So hopefully you can take a screenshot of that. I did not get any more work done on Polly this time, but hopefully next time. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and talk about my first whip. Let me find the chart for you here. This is Red and Green Carnation Sampler by Samplers Remembered. And I saw this for the first time on uh, the Country Samplers. I get I'm subscribed to their email and I saw it as a club kit. And so I was anxiously waiting for it to but look. There's a needle roll, right? I was waiting for it to become available. And I uh, saw this at the attic and was like, oh, yes, yes, yes. I was so excited. So this is, I think, 40 count vintage meadow rue. And I get asked a lot about the fabric on the side. I have explained that um, I'm very careful with the amount of linen that I use. I try to get every bit of it I can. So I add scrap pieces of fabric, any kind, doesn't matter what it is. And that way it allows me to put it in my cue snap. I don't stitch, I don't have to clamp over the stitching and I can get very close to the edges of my fabric. I put this in my Lowry, which is just a floor stand and I stitch two-handed. So um, this has been, and so that's, this is one of the things that I talk about when, uh, how I end my thread. So I will trail, um, let me show you the back. I will trail it in a stitch path. And so that as I'm continuing to stitch across, I will be covering this up. I make sure that I'm thinking about how my thread is crossing in the back so that it's not crossing, you know, I'm not going horizontally and then I, I end up not catching my thread. <laughs> but as I get over to, as I stitch across to here, I will then take my scissors and trim that off. I often will end my thread from the top of my fabric. It's the exact same thing that you would do on the bottom. You would just run, run your needle under the last few threads that you stitched and I do the same thing right on the top and then snip it. And I, they don't have to flip to my, the back of my work as often when I do that. And that works out really well for me. It's sometimes a little unwieldy to flip your Lowry to the back when you have a larger cue snap. So I've made a pretty good, I think I would stitch somewhere from here up um, and a bit on the sides. And I am really enjoying this. It's all the call for flosses. I think there's only four. And so I have, I now I get to get, I finally worked my way up to the, the fun carnations at the top. So I'm excited to, uh, to start those. All right, so red and green. And then the other whip that I got some progress on, I started this in August of last year with a couple of friends, uh, Rachel Stitching for Solace and uh, Melanie Smith Yarns and Threads, which I don't think she's made any progress on this lately, but Francis Poole by Brenda Gervais, also uh, with Thy Needle and Thread. Um, I am using the Call for Colors, but you'll notice I made uh, an alteration here and I'm going to be changing a bit here with the cartouche. I got a little bit stalled out, out on this when I was stitching it um, a while ago because I wasn't sure if I was gonna change colors. And I decided not to. I just just stitched the red squirrels and the gold trees and 
I think Heritage Gold, once upon a time, might have been a little more green. But I'm really, this is um, 40 count Liberty Gathering Gray by R&R. &R, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. There are very uh, different colors that all, are actually all working together really well. I did a fun thing uh, where I posted on Instagram just yesterday and I said, okay, well, I have a couple of thrifted frames and since the border's all done, I actually could cut one down and uh, get it in the clamp and start drying. There is, there is something always drying around here lately. It's like whether my wood glue is drying in the clamp on top of the washer or I'm painted something and it's lying on the floor in front of the TV because you know the light's good and I have to be able to see what I'm doing. If it's too cold outside, I can't stick things outside. When, now it's a little bit warmer now, so I'm putting things outside a lot. But uh, at one point, one day, I had a bunch of things. I laid them all out on our bed and I wanted to bring in a bunch of frames in from the garage where they would now be all dusty. So I had to dust them all off. There are these very large frames and I had, I don't know, 10 of them in there and I was auditioning them, right? So I dusted them all off and I had everything on the bed and I'm holding them up and trying to make decisions. And my husband, who's really very patient and doesn't normally say anything, he kind of came in and he's like, um, are we storing frames in our bedroom now? And I was like, no. And then he, he sees there's something on the floor in front of the TV and he's, um, can we maybe just not? <laughs> I'll put things in front of the TV. He works from home. And so, you know, I make a mess during the day. And then before the end of the night, I would put everything away. And uh, so I was like, okay, I know. I, I needed good light. And the top of the washing machine probably had something drying on, on, it, on it already. So then I've just noticed that that's become a regular thing around here with me doing my own framing. There's always something in a clamp somewhere. So anyway, I did change, as you'll notice, I changed the trust in the Lord. Oh, and I have, so the frame. So I put up the, the pole basically, and, and we had tallied it up. My husband helped me tally it up by the end of last night. I haven't looked at anything yet today. And it was pretty neck and neck. I, you know, the ones are really dark. If you want to go take a, pic, uh, a peek there, one of them is a dark frame and then one of them is a gold frame. And I have not decided, I haven't cut anything down. We'll have to see, because it was pretty close between the two of them. But um, I retarded up here. I will also be adding the scripture reference here. That is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Let me show you a little bit about that. I'm almost done with this. I think that's all I have left. Uh, I added the whole row here and a bird and the vase. And now um, I have a few more flowers around the border. And there's two birds here, a vase, and then the cartouche. So that's all I have left. And I, I, I may get this pulled out later today. We'll see. But I wanted to show you when I uh, make a working copy of my chart, and it's really large, and as I go, I've showed you before, that I will cut the pieces that as I finish them. And here's where I'm at. Here's the last little bit that I have. And so this is what I'm down to, plus a couple of, the, like I said, the flowers on the border. But I recharted it to here to, for the screen. I used the back of the um, Brenda Key sampler motif book, has this charting paper in the very back, and I just made a copy of it. And I don't know if I got the letters from that book. I often do, the letters and the numbers or from another big thick alphabet book that I have, but I just retarded them in pencil and um, I think it's gonna fit in the middle. I won't be able to do the middle part, but that's gonna look really good. So uh, I'm very excited about that. Now that I've made the decisions, it's just about getting the stitching done. So that was my other whip. Let me show you now, I have my new start for our um, BBD. It's hashtag BBD Mighty Acorn S-A-L. And let me find the book here. So I started this uh, the beginning of this month, May 1st, with my friend Darlene Dion. We're stitching this one here. And uh, several of you have joined us. Thank you so much. You can see uh, Cora Lee from Stitching is Elementary and Crafting Kirsty. They both have floss tubes and they are stitching this as well. So thank you, ladies. And as well as if you go to the hashtag, you'll get to see everybody else who's doing it. Um, I'm stitching this on a fabric by Misty Purcell. It's salted caramel or caramel. Whoops, 40 count. Let me show you the tag. It's really beautiful. This is my first time stitching on this color by Misty. I've stitched on a few others, but this is just so pretty. And so when I cut my fabric down, I think that um, the other one that Amanda stitched from the Sewing Club book, the Willing Hands to Work, that she really enjoyed, I, that may actually have to get uh, put on another piece of the, on, on, when I cut this down. But I started with the border to get my placement and uh, both Darlene and Kirsty stitched the whole border first. And I know Kirsty called me out a little bit. She said, hey, is that double border stitching that I see going on there? It's like, yes, Kirsty, I'm stitching the border. So I started there, but I did immediately work my way up to the squirrel. And then from the squirrel to the house 
and over to the tree. Anything that I could get, you know, bearings and not have to count too far. I do like to jump around as I stitch, but um, I will stitch the border as I go. I'm not one that wants to stitch the whole border all at one time. Uh, I will stitch it each time I pull it out. I will make sure I put in, if I'm deciding to stitch the border, <laughs> I will make sure that I stitch it as I go a little bit here and there. Waiting till the end would not be a good idea. Right, Sally? Waiting till the end. <laughs> Um, okay, so I think that is all that I have going on there. We are taking our trip. I will be able to go to Stitcher's Paradise here uh, soon, and I get to meet up with my friends Brenda and Barbara. Very excited. Um, I think I'm going to take my um, BBD Christmas stocking Sal. Let me reach here really quickly, and I can show you that. It's from the Blackbird Designs Christmas book, Home for the Holidays. And so I have my third stocking on the go. It's on 32 count raw natural with sulky. So that'll be a good travel project. And I don't really worry about taking too many things when we travel. We're usually pretty busy. Um, so one one will be more than enough if I'm you know stuck in an airport or at the hotel and have insomnia. So that'll work out well. Um, I also wanna remind you that um, we're going to be starting. So my friend, Roberta Lyle, we're gonna be starting this the end of this month. She's on a retreat this weekend and I will be on my trip next weekend. So we're gonna go ahead and I think it'll be the end of this month. Um, if you wanna stitch Sarah Allen with us by Needlework Press. I have a lot of things I have to get kitted up again now, um, picking out some fabric. I have an idea for that one. So I hope that's gonna work out. And another one, now this is uh, Annie B's Folk Art. She's doing videos again with her two daughters. It's out, they're just joyful to watch. Um, and they are going to do, they're all Jane Austen fans, as am I. And they had the wonderful idea to do hashtag Jane Austen 2022 SAL. I cannot be specific. I think it's starting the beginning of June, but I'm not for sure. Um, it's any Jane Austen chart. I have had this one, A Gentleman's Daughter by Plum Street Samplers, in my collection for a while. And so I'm really excited to be able to have uh, the opportunity to get this going. I think they even have the fabric. So that'll be um, an easy thing just to make sure I have the flosses. Matter of fact, I should make that list before I go to Stitcher's Paradise and see if I can pick up any of the flosses while I'm there. Um, okay, so there's that. And then one more. Now, uh, this is the Misty Purcell one that I told you is coming up. So Rachel Q Stitches, hi Rachel. She has a birthday the end of this month. And for her birthday, she wants to start the new one by Misty, which I have to download. I haven't done that yet. I think I'm just going to do the PDF. Um, and so this is Stitcher by Misty Purcell. And she wants to do this as a birthday sale starting the end of this month. And I probably can get a start on it. I don't know. Um, that'll be a lot of them all going at the same time. So that's all right. That'll be fun. But if you want to join, uh, go watch Rachel's last video and, and she talks about it there as well. Um, okay, so let's see. Do I have anything else to share with you? I think, oh, also, if you go watch, uh, Roberta is the sable stitcher on uh, Floss Tube. And if you go watch her last video, at the very end of her video, she showed a few of her new purchases. And Roberta, I could pretty much say there were, I think, three. <laughs> at some point, I may be wanting to stitch with you. There might have only been two, but there were a few. Uh, a couple of them, she showed Hunter Gatherer by Rosewood Manor. And that was like the third time now that I've seen that one. It was not one that I thought I would, you know, have been drawn to, but I saw my friend Molly, the Sensible Stitcher show it a few months ago. And I thought, oh, that's really interesting. And then I saw, I saw Country Samplers shows it in their latest, you know, email that went out. And I was like, that, there it is again. And then Roberta showed it. I thought, okay, I need to keep my eye out for that because that was a very interesting chart. You have to go take a peek at, like I said, watch the last, watch her whole video. But at the end of her video, you'll know the ones I'm referring to. Um, and then the other one, this one I really, really want to uh, track down at some point. It was, I have it written down here, something Murray. Um, oh, fully, where is it? Helen Murray, 1822. And it's by Needle Made Designs, um, a Scottish sampler. It's beautiful. So I really like to, to look for that one as well in the future. Um, she showed a couple of others, but like peacock, badger, unicorn. I, I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna be watching other people stitch that. I keep thinking, well, no, no, I won't stitch that one. Um, okay, I did have one fun little story. It's tiny. My husband, who is actually pretty savvy now, you know, he'll often let me tell him stories. I'll, I'll ask him, can I tell you a story? Can I tell you? He's like, oh yeah, yeah. So uh, he was watching an episode of The Virginian. Do you remember that? That is, you know, it's very old Western. And he was watching that and he said, oh my gosh, he said, 
one of the characters, the cowboy walks in and there's a woman sitting there and she's stitching. And the cowboy says, he says, oh, I see you're working on your sampler. It's like, and my husband, like that was about a time. He would have never known that conversation would have made no sense to him. And it just made me laugh that he knows exactly what that is now. All right. Um, oh gosh, I think that's everything. I hope I haven't forgotten anything. If I have, we'll talk about it next time. Uh, I hope that I'm going to share some scripture as always, and I hope that you'll stay. But if you're just here for the stitching, that's all the stitching. So uh, I hope that you're stitching something that you're thoroughly enjoying, whether it be one thing or 10 things or any number. Um, maybe it's May for you and you've made plans. Maybe you're sticking to them or they've gone by the wayside, whatever it is. I hope it's bringing you joy, whatever it is you're working on. So uh, take care and I hope to see you again soon. Okay. So for those of you who are staying with me, um, you know, this last couple of weeks for me has been, I've, it's been very emotional. It's run the gamut of emotions. I think from just, there's been some concern, there's been, you know, some anxious times, there's been a little bit of um, just even fear, uh, whether it be for someone in our own family, loved ones that we pray for. Um, we're a members of a pretty big sized church and we consider them family as well. And so there's um, just, you know, there's, prayers for one that was just a newborn and all the way up to adult children. They're always someone's baby, right? Um, been a lot of prayers there and there's been, there was a wedding that was joyous and wonderful, a uh, time of celebration. Um, but as I'm, you know, praying for what scriptures to share with you every week, I thought, well, what has the Lord been, you know, ministering to you in your particular circumstance? What, what has been happening in your life recently? And, and what scripture have you, has it been something where you've been longing for more of a heart to know him more and, you know, asking him to draw you closer? Is it, you know, just any number of things? And for me, I have my go-to scriptures in these times of, uh, just where it's more anxious or more fearful. And, you know, I have my Psalm 23 and Philippians 4 and, um, you know, the Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Um, but here are a few that I'm not as familiar with. And uh, I have like seven of them to share with you. And I, I hope that they will be a blessing as to you as they were to me. So we're going to do the NASB version on all of these today. So let's go ahead and read scripture together. Isaiah 12, 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord God is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. Isaiah 26, 3. The steadfast of mind you will keep in perfect peace, because he trusts in you. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort who comforts us in all our affliction so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Jeremiah 17, 7. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose trust is the Lord. Psalm 9, 10. And those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Isaiah 41, 10. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand.